All right, you know who my next guest is. Brian Battle is on the show now, and he's going to be taking on Trayshawn Gore next on February the 5th. Brian, how are you? I'm doing well. Thanks for having me on the show. Yes, definitely a pleasure. Uh, a lot to get to today, but first I just want to start with, you know, this camp so far. We're about a month out from fight night, so how you feeling? What have you been up to as far as camp and uh, the training specifically getting ready for Trayshawn? Uh, man, I, I feel terrific. You know what I'm saying? I'm in the best shape of my life, uh, cardiovascularly, like physically, strength wise, speed wise, you know what I'm saying? Uh, you know, just in training since the ultimate fighter, I've been afforded uh, opportunities and, you know, time to focus on training that I never had before. You know what I'm saying? There was a whole new level of work and training that, you know, I didn't even know I could get to. So, um, yeah, no, I'm, I'm, I'm excited. I'm stoked right now. You know what I'm saying? I feel like I'm in a place right now where if I would have fought the version of myself who fought in the finale, I would finish that guy. You know what I mean? So uh, I'm ready to go. How pumped are you to fight Trayshawn? Because he was supposed to be your opponent in the finale. And uh, obviously he had that injury uh, in Step Gilbert. You got the win there and, and won the top 29 middleweight season. This must be exciting for you to kind of like check off that extra box. Some people feeling like Trayshawn might be a, even more of a difficult opponent for you uh, than the guy that you beat in the uh, finale, Urbina. What, what do you say to that? Like how, how excited are you to actually go in there to put a stamp on it and, and to, to beat him? Uh, if I'm being completely honest, it's, it's one of those things where it doesn't matter to me. You know what I'm saying? I'm a contracted killer. You know what I'm saying? I go in there and I take out who they pay me to take out. But what I do like about this is, you know, you know, you got to love the fans. You know what I'm saying? You, you want to give the fans the fights that they want. And, you know, this was something that a lot of people are really excited for. Like, uh, I feel like someone like two guys who are making their UFC debuts shouldn't have, you know, this kind of hype heading into a UFC fight. So, um, just seeing the fan reaction has been really cool. Um, but other than, you know, public perception of this fight, you know, there's really, uh, you know, it's just Trey, you know what I'm saying? This is a guy that I thought I was going to have to fight a million times. So, uh, you know, uh, I'll just go in there, handle business like I always do. You know what I'm saying? Go in there, you know, break his will, you know what I'm saying? Make him a better fighter, uh, you know, because he's going to have a lot of lessons to learn after this fight and, uh, you know, move on to the next one. Definitely can't wait for this one again, February 5th. I, I do want to just discuss winning the ultimate fighter round two RNC victory over Urbina. we got to go all the way back to August. That's when uh, the, the finale actually happened. So it was quite a while ago now, man. What did it ultimately mean to you to, to win that show? Because it's a big deal. And, and tell me a little bit about, you know, what life has been for you since then. Um. To win the ultimate fighter, you know, it's just, it's one of those things that it's still like to this day is kind of surreal. You know what I'm saying? Maybe it's because I like live in, you know, not a very, you know, fight capital heavy place in North Carolina. Um, it, it's really one of those things where it only really hits if I go like to a Naga or, you know, go to a local fight promotion where there's a bunch of fight fans gathered in one place and people recognize me. Other than that, um, you know, the the perks of winning the ultimate fighter is just you know the opportunity to really just devote myself to my craft you know what i'm saying i didn't have that ability before you know uh you know i was working jobs you know what i'm saying there was a long time where you know i, I had to wake up at four in the morning you know i'm not going to bed till 10 30 at night you know what i'm saying because i have to go to work and then go to training and go back to work and go back to training you know what i'm saying it's uh there was a lot of times where it was like you know i was barely making it to fight so uh now now, you know what I'm saying? I think I, I, I'm i playing on the same playing field as everyone else, you know what I'm saying? Uh, you know, I'm just excited to show the new and improved Brian. That's that's really the best thing about winning Tough is the opportunities that it opened up for me. Um, you know, the the title of the Tough champ, you know, that's as cool as I, I make it, you know what I'm saying? If I go out there and lay an egg and, you know, I don't train hard and I go out there and lose, then, you know, I kind of devalue the title of the ultimate fighter. But if I go out there and continue to get better, you know what I'm saying? Uh, treat every fight like it's the tough finale, you know what I'm saying? Keep on taking people out. Then, you know, I can be one of those people that adds prestige to the title so that people coming up after me want to win that title a little bit more. Yeah, very, very well said. What, what was your experience like overall just in the tough house? Because I, I got to imagine, man, that must have been 
challenging to say the least to kind of keep your head on straight to stay focused get there in the end and ultimately win it like all in all when you look back at it now like what are you taking from that experience what was, what was the whole thing like for you um well uh definitely i and i always knew i was built for a show like uh the ultimate fighter you know um when i was an amateur you know there was one time i fought like six times in a year you know what i'm saying fighting uh making weight you know what i'm saying that's that's stuff that, you know, I got down to a science, you know what I'm saying? So, you know, I knew going into the competition, fighting multiple times, I was going to be okay with that. And, you know, something I saw when I was on the show was how much more comfortable I was with my skills and abilities than a lot of other people were. I feel like a lot of people were insecure. They didn't want people to see, you know, what they had. And, you know, they're afraid of people making adjustments. And, you know, personally, I feel like if I come out and do my best, there's no adjustments that you can make to deal with what I do. You know what I'm saying? They're like, you people aren't going to beat me. I'm I'm the one who's going to beat me. You know what I'm saying? So, um, yeah, just, you know, confidence and, you know, hard work, you know what I'm saying? Takes you a long way. You know what I mean? There's like times where, you know, you feel like quitting and giving up. But, you know, if you keep on doing the right thing, good things happen. And tough was the result of, a lot of work and a lot of struggle that people didn't see, you know what I'm saying? Uh, that prepared me for that moment. So, uh, yeah, it, it was, uh, being in the house was an interesting experience, but it was something that, you know, I was just prepared for I think more than other people. So team Volkanovsky, what was it like to, to learn under the, the 145 pound champ, Alexander Volkanovsky? I got to imagine that must've been pretty cool just as, as like a, I mean, obviously you're a professional fighter, you're in the UFC now, but we all get into to this sport as a fan first. That had to have been a really cool experience to, to be there right next to him learning uh, throughout the whole time there. Absolutely. Dude, man, I tell you, uh, and, you know, going on to the show, it's one of those things where, you know, you're kind of starstruck by the coaches at first, you know, it's like, wow, that's Brian Ortega right there. You know, wow, that's Volk, you know what I'm saying? The, both their coaching uh, staffs, you know, they got people who you recognize, you know, um, and on the first day when they were doing the evaluations for the fighters, um, you know, you, you can see this in the first episode where Ortega and his guys, you know, they're asking people whose team they want to be on, you know what I'm saying? And they're just like, they walk up to you and they're like, okay, we're just going to ask you a couple questions. I ask you a couple questions. And they're like, all right, final question, you know, whose team do you want to be on? And it's just like, you're by yourself, like surrounded by three team Ortega, yeah, Ortega, you know, one of his coaches, another one of his coaches, you're like, whoa dude, like I don't know you guys you know what I'm saying like how, how can you like put me and so uh you know at the time I would have been okay being on either team I told them that I was like I mean you know either team they're like no you got to make a choice and so I was like well if you're gonna put a gun to my head I, I see Craig Jones over there <laughs> you know what I'm saying I'm like I would love to train with Craig Jones so if you're gonna put a gun to my head I guess I'm picking team Volk right now uh and so I don't know if that had anything to do with them not picking me or uh but uh, being, but that aside, being with Volk was awesome because uh, I felt like, you know, his philosophy, uh, his coach's philosophy that they brought to fighting was very similar to what we do at home back at my gym. Um, and Volk was kind of like the fighter that my coach always preaches and wants us to be, you know what I'm saying? Like everything he tells us to do, Volk does it. And watching someone actually do that stuff to, you know, have the reflexes, to have the fight IQ, to have the cardio, to have the focus. And he can just do that all day, just watching him work, train. And uh, it was really something where you're like, okay, you know, the possibilities are endless. You know what I'm saying? Like, if you stay focused and you work hard, you know, you're smart about it, you know, you can really optimize the game. That's, it was really cool. The long answer to a short question. It was really cool being underneath Volk. Yeah, for, for sure. And, and their fight, man, was easily one of the fights of the year. Be, be honest here. How how nervous were you watching Volkanovski, you know, struggle to, to get out of that submission attempt by Ortega? Did you feel like Ortega had him or did you really believe that Volk was going to be able to get out? So, and like, I can't even lie about this because I was on the, the little watch party thing the UFC did. If you go on Fight Pass, I'm one of the people on the daggum thing. And you can see when Volk is in that choke, you know, I'm I'm fucking the whole time. I'm like, ah, Volk, what's going on? And then he's in the choke. And I like, I stop and I get quiet. Cause you know, you know, that's what Ortega is known for his submissions. You know what I mean? Um, and, but it's, it's one of those things where it's like, you were like, you had to hold your breath for a second. You know what I mean? 
uh, as would anybody. Uh, you know, I had total confidence in Volk winning that fight, but you know, in that second, you're just like, okay, you know, can you get out of this? You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, I was nervous. I was nervous. You know, I believed if anyone could do it, Volk could do it, but I was definitely holding my breath, praying that he was going to escape that submission. And fortunately, he did. Uh, went on to, you know, put on a clinic for the rest of the fight. Was there a fight better than that in 2021? Or is there, what would you say is the closest to it? Yeah, because I'm a little biased on that. Um, uh, closest to it, it probably had to be Brian Battle versus Gilbert Urbina or Brian Battle versus Andre. One of those two, I don't know. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but no, in all seriousness, uh, you know, uh, Max Holloway versus... Um, oh, uh, Yair, that fight was yeah. that I didn't expect, like, I kept on expecting Yair to like gas and stop fighting. And he just kept on fighting. It was just unbelievable to watch. Um, obviously Chandler versus, uh, uh, Gaethje, that fight was freaking nuts. Uh, and that's just recency bias. I mean, there's been some amazing fights this year. There's been some really, really terrific fights. Um, so yeah, uh, I probably have to go with closest just because, you know, it's on the top of my head, uh, Chandler versus Gaethje, but I'm sure if I went back, there's been just some absolute was Dan Hooker versus that was last year. Dan Hooker fought. Yeah, that was last year. Okay. Yeah. never mind. I'm getting my, my events confused now, but yeah. Yeah. Chandler versus Gaethje. Yeah. Well, we're, we're early 2022 now. It's just crazy how fast time flies. It's tough to remember, you know, who, what, what fight is in what year, especially if it happens early on in the year. One last question before we transition here, Brian, uh, about the ultimate fighter. And that is what was your favorite, or I guess your least favorite prank of the season? I'll tell you for me, I don't like snakes and uh, th that snake prank. I would have been like Usain Bolt, like running for the Hills. But what was it for you? Like what stands out? Man, yeah, that snake one messed me up. I didn't think, like, you know, seeing snakes on TV, I didn't think of that, like, walking in the light, that had my adrenaline messed up for the whole next training session. That was, but it was kind of cool, though, so I'm not mad about it, but it did jack up my adrenaline. Uh, <laughs> see, the problem with the pranks were, besides that one, we didn't really get to see, uh, we didn't get to see the donkey prank. Um I don't know, man. There weren't really a whole lot of pranks this season that I can think of. You know what I'm saying? Just petty stuff. Like people would move someone's oatmeal or something like that. You know what I mean? Or like people would sneak, sneak each other's protein bars or something like that. Um, but yeah, I mean, I can't think of anything off the top of my head prank wise besides the snake one. The snake one was probably my yeah. favorite. Yeah, that one left a memory that I will never forget for the rest of my life. So I'll probably have to go with that one by default. Yeah, I can only imagine. I was cringing uh, on my couch watching it at home because I was just thinking just what it would be like being there in person. So I'm glad it was you and not me, my man. <laughs> Let's transition to the uh, to the middleweight uh, division here. You're a UFC rostered middleweight fighter now. When, when you look at the division as a whole, how do you feel like it compares to, to a lot of the other divisions? Because, you know, the, the welterweights, the lightweights, they get a lot of love. It's a very, very deep divisions how do you feel the middleweight uh, stacks up to the rest um middleweight division i think uh there was a little while where it had become kind of shallow you know what i'm saying and it was, you saw guys like flying up the ranks you know after a couple good wins um but now with like new talent coming in it seems to be getting like a little bit deeper and a little bit deeper you know what i'm saying people are going back down to welterweight so you got less bloated welterweights fighting at middleweight you know what i mean uh like uh, Pereira, Alex Pereira, you know what I'm saying? Guy looks like a, a, a freaking nightmare, you know what I'm saying? Uh, four fights into his career. Um, you know, uh, there's just been a couple of guys on the contender series that have just been showing out in the middleweight division. So, um, you know, I think right now it, it is in the deepest division, if I'm being 100% honest, um, but it has the potential to really get fun and exciting over the next couple of years you know if people like sean strickland keep doing well you know uh like i said alex Pereira keeps on showing out you know it could be fun it could be fun we could have a lot of fun if darren till ever gets his act together you know what i mean just stuff like that stuff like that adesanya whitaker too the the rematch title fight right around the corner who's your pick man is 
is one of those where I like both fighters. I kind of like Robert Whitaker more because I identify with him a little bit more. You know what I'm saying? Um, and, you know, he's he's had a lot of time, you know what I'm saying, to go over his mistakes, to make improvements to his game. Um, my problem is that I think he's just – Stylebender's the worst kind of matchup for him possible. And, you know, it's not like he's getting complacent. You know what I'm saying? He's still training, working hard, trying to get better, you know. He had that bad loss to – well, I mean, it wasn't even bad, but he he had his first MMA loss to Jan, so it's not like he's riding on clown nine right now. You know what I'm saying? Uh, I think it's a bad matchup for Robert. I'd love to see him, like, do some crazy stuff. You know what I'm saying? Maybe take him down a couple times if he can. Uh, but, yeah, I see Style Bender, you know, doing more of the same of what he's been doing. Okay, can't wait for that matchup. Now, yeah. February 5th, uh, you, that's, the, that's the card that you're uh, fighting Treshawn on. I, do, I was looking at Tapology, and it doesn't look like the, the venue has actually been officially booked yet, but it seems like it's going to be at the Apex in, in Vegas. Who, who will be in your corner come fight night? Uh, my corner will be the exact same corner I had uh, from my last fight, you know, uh, Sensei Tom, Sensei Kevin, Sensei Tony, you know what I'm saying? Uh, we've been doing this for a long time, you know what I'm saying? We're just going to keep on doing the damn thing, you know what I'm saying? Uh yeah, yeah, you know, I got my my teammate Shamit coming up with me, you know what I'm saying, to help me, you know, do the last final touches. But uh, you know, I'm sticking with the the people that know me the best. Um, sticking with the people who, you know, are honest with me. Uh and you know, we're just gonna keep on shocking the world. When you look at Treshawn and just as a fighter, where where do you feel like you're gonna hold the biggest advantage in this fight? Um Diversity, diversity in my attack, you know what I'm saying? Um, Treshawn's super dangerous, you know what I'm saying? Uh, everyone knows what he brings to the table. And I think that's why a lot of people are so high on him as a prospect. Um, but, you know, if you look at the overall like category of all the skills that he showed inside the cage during his pro career uh, is not very impressive. You know what I'm saying? Like he does a lot of things very well. I do more things well, you know what I'm saying? Um, I'm looking to get in his face, you know what I'm saying? Really test him, uh, put pressure on him, see how he deals with it. And, uh, you know, uh, I'm, I'm going to try to melt him just like everyone else. And uh, I don't think he'll be able to withstand the, the, the mental pressure as well as the physical pressure, in my humble opinion. Official prediction, how do you get it done? Uh, man, there's like a million different scenarios, you know what I'm saying, for a million different situations. Um, I think the, the easiest one, the the one that, you know, people are probably going to put money on is, you know, the first round being really competitive. Uh, but, you know, as the fight goes on, you know, him wearing down from the pressure and me, you know, slowly, slowly, slowly starting to, you know, take his will and, uh, you know, impose my own on him. Uh, I, I, I can't, I don't really see it getting past the second round personally, in my humble opinion. You know what I'm saying? That's been, that's generally a goal of mine you know what i'm saying the first round to me is a qualifying round you know what i'm saying you got to prove that you deserve to be in there the first round and the second round is the round i go for the kill if you get out of the second round then we're in a war you know what i'm saying and it's like we're really fucking going at it but i haven't been out of the second round in a long time so we'll see if trey can change that all right last question for me 2022 just started man so what's the what's the goals what are you trying to accomplish here uh, in 2022 man in 2022 i just uh, I want to fight at least four times. I want to fight at least four times, uh, you know, and I just want to keep on training and getting better, man. Um, like I said, I mean, since uh, I've gotten off tough with the opportunities, it's really like show me that the, the, the sky is the limit as long as I'm willing to, you know, focus and put in the work. And so, um, you know, I want to see how far I can go. You know what I'm saying? I want to push myself. You know what I'm saying? So uh, 2022, you know, 2021 was awesome. Uh, I fully expect 2022 to be way better. You know what I'm saying? Uh, and by 2022, by the end of 2022, I want people to look at me as a a, a, a real deal middleweight coming up the ranks. So, uh, you know, I guess that's kind of vague, but that's what I got going on right now. Besides just taking home as many necks as possible. I love it, man. It all starts February 5th. Brian Battle meets Treshawn Gore in a middleweight bout at UFC Fight Night 201. Awesome time interviewing you for the first time, Brian. Uh, before I let you go, I want to give you the floor. Tell people where to follow you on social media. And if you have anyone to thank, the floor is yours. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, first of all, thank you for having me on the show. It's a nice interview. I appreciate it very much. Uh, on Instagram, you can find me at 
Pooh Bear Battle. All right. Uh, no underscores. The one with the underscores, that was my old account. I got locked out of that one. Don't follow that account. Pooh Bear Battle. You'll see a picture of me with, with blood trickling down from the finale. Um, on Twitter, you know, Brian Battle on Twitter. Um, uh, <laughs> Twitter's weird, man. I'm still trying to get used to Twitter. It's weird what blows up on Twitter and what doesn't blow up on Twitter. I posted a comment about Jake Paul, and that might be like the most commented, retweeted thing I've ever put on Twitter. And I thought like 10 people were going to comment on it. It was really funny. Uh, but yeah, follow me on Twitter. Twitter's a riot. Um, and yeah, 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 that's it. You know, you can Brian Pooh Bear Battle Facebook page if you want to link up with me there. You know, shout out to all my coaches, you know what I'm saying? Uh, all my teammates who are in the, 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 uh, in the cut grinding with me all the time, getting better. You know what I'm saying? Uh, you know, big shout out to my wife. None of this would be possible without her. It's one of those things. She just makes me a better person overall. So uh, it definitely translates over to my fighting too. Um, and yeah, man. Yeah, man. Uh, you know, shout out to Trey Sean for signing the contract and giving me an opponent for February 5th. So uh, there's just a lot of things to go around. You know what I'm saying? I'm a very blessed man, you know? So I'm very happy. 